Hi, today we will discuss uh, analysis of beams by using stiffness matrix method. Okay, we had a uh, one, two, three members. One end is free, free end supports. So we need to do this uh, force as a nodal, a nodal force, a nodal moment. Okay, nodal means joint. It will act on the joints. Okay, then start the program. So step one is degree of freedom. So we need to find the degree of freedom, number of unknown displacements in the structure. We had a number of unknown displacements are two. That is theta a equal to zero because it's a fixed support and theta b equal to theta b and theta c equal to theta c. Okay. Next boundary conditions. We need to check the boundary conditions. The boundary condition. This is the displacement method. So we need to check the unknown displacements. Okay. We are already we know that we had two unknown displacements. So we need to check the to where it is to unknown displacement data theta b and theta c okay next is case 3 we need to select the coordinates we are, we know that here theta b and theta c are the unknown places so i had selected theta b point as a one position and theta 2 as a sorry theta c as a second position then the fixed end moment so this is the uh, we know that displacement method the major assumption is to find the fixed end moment moment so by using fixed end moments only we are calculating the uh, solution okay so major assumption for displacement method is fixed end moment condition so the fixed end moments of point load is p a b square by l square point load is a distance of a and b so here two meters from the left and four meters from the right okay minus p a b square by l square because here c clockwise rotation is positive we are taking clockwise rotation is positive then from the right is clockwise rotation is positive then the left is obviously it will be the anti-clockwise so it will be negative okay one is take is a positive and one is take the negative and uniformly distributed load we know that double l square by 12 as it is though hmm? I'm giving some guidance that's it uh, don't do the calculation the do the calculation okay and uh, next case is real forces due to the external loads real forces due to the external loads so we need to check uh, with one and with two okay we need to check the position at one and position at two so position at one the fixed end moment of ba plus fixed end moment of bc that is 40 this is 40 and minus 106.67 that gives will give the at one position and second the second position we know that only fixed moment of c to d c to b <coughs> so 106.67 okay then we need to find the nodal forces also nodal forces are moments at one it is there is no nodal forces the nodal moment is zero at two we had a selected no nodal forces is 120 as a 16 to 20 yeah check it 16 to 16 to 2 is a 120 okay we got the nodal which is step 5 you know displacement method you need to displacement method in a coordinate one so we need to apply the coordinate one we need to, we need to apply the rotation into coordinate one so i am applying theta b equal to one so since uh, theta a equal to zero theta b equal to one and theta b equal to one theta b equal to one and theta c equal to zero here theta at a the uh, c here here my location at 1 and applying rotation at 1 okay then we need to see take it as a k is k b to a and k b to c it will give the k11 okay for k11 suppose okay i am applying force at 1 and displacement at 1 okay like this and suppose next uh, one and two my load at one and i'm checking the displacement at two okay i'm going here even the load is at one position like that we need to consider so k11 means uh, here k b to a and k b to c 
here two we had a two stiffness so k11 so as to similarly we know the conditions we need to check the formula okay and k12 k12 uh, is the difference okay no we know that next to k21 similarly k11 k21 load applying at one position and checking the second position okay this remember k11 k1 applying the load at here and checking the displacement at here k21 means 2 we are going at 2 but we are applying the load at 1 only ok load at 1 only that is the k21 the k21 gives the hmm? k21 gives kc to b ok kc to b that is equal to a by l and similar the condition will vary both two things because applying load at a condition 1 ok next uh, the unit displacement at 2 so theta c equal to 1 then theta b equal to 0 theta b equal to 0 and theta c equal to 1 so we need to check we need to check 1 2 so applying it load 2 but i am i am at a place of 1 so i am at a place of displacement at 1 ok so the condition is valid this and uh, 2 2 I am applying load at 2 and I am at be there at 2 only so we will get here so calculation part is the rest of everything the confusion I am giving just confusion arising, arising. so wherever you confused I am giving the explanation ok that's it and uh, we may need to make the stiffness matrix k matrix so we got k matrix 7 by 3 ei 0.5 ei 0.5 ei and by the isometric matrix we know that k12 is equal to k21 ok Next. form the stiffness matrix stiffness matrix ok remember stiffness we need to find the stiffness so our uh, unknown position k is uh, our uh, left hand and uh, we don't know the displacements so we need to find unknown unknowns are the displacements ok in left side we know the forces force is direct comes to delta hmm? we know the delta sorry we know the k and we need to find the delta and we know the p minus p okay for delta uh, inverse of matrix we will go inverse and do the inverse ad minus bc okay and we will get the delta 1 and delta 2 okay delta 1 and delta 2 so we need to these are the angular displacements okay these are the angular displacement so we need to get the final moment so to know to know the final moment we need to substitute the displacements at a final moments that is the slope deflection equations okay with the fixed end conditions we will get the moments okay mab and mba okay uh, mbc and mc2b okay we got the moments finally from the moment we take uh, one moment as a clockwise or anti-clockwise whichever moment uh, to better the calculation see here mab is minus uh, 60.80 minus means anti-clockwise rotation take it as anti-clockwise rotation take a moment here moment here and moment here ok after that he had a point load so we had a we have triangular load after that we had a uniform distributed load so we need to form a parabolic curve here is the point load 0 so here 0 then we need to curve thank you this is a very easy thank you